We're here at our Jade controller again. Once again, we are going to be utilizing the simulation tool on the computer so we can see every single screen possible as opposed to just the screens that are set up for this particular one. So let's go ahead and open that up. So here's our simulation tool. It looks exactly like our actual controller. We'll just have a little bit more stuff that we actually get to look at today. So we're on the status screens. When we go to the controller for the very first time, what's operating on the roof, the very first screen we're gonna see is the status screen. Previous videos, we talked about how to set it up. This is more, it's up and running. What can I see? What can I check out? What can I optimize here? Under status, when I click enter, I'll see the different things available to me. The entire status menu is not editable. This is a view only thing. It's telling you what's happening right now at this moment in time. So the settings and the set points are already where I tweak things. Here's where I can see what's going on. So the very first one, economizer available. Is it actually in an economizer situation? Meaning is the outdoor air cool enough to be an economizer day? Or if I have enthalpy, is it cool enough and dry enough to be an economizer day? So it's just gonna say yes or no on the screen here. So right now it's saying it's an economizer day. The next one, is it actually economizing right now at this moment in time? So are we using outdoor air right now at this very second for our first stage of cooling? The thermostat asks for Y1, is the economizer actually operating right now? Yes or no? Occupied, am I in occupied mode? So is my thermostat occupancy output wired to the occupancy input of this, this economizer controller and it's telling me I'm occupied right now? So that'll say yes. If it's nighttime or any other unoccupied mode, it would say no. If you have it jumpered, physically jumpered, instead of wired to your thermostat, it'll always say yes in this case. The difference between occupied and unoccupied will be, do I have minimum ventilation position or do I not have a, a minimum ventilation position? Heat pump, that doesn't apply to a lot of what we do in our market, um, but if I have a heat pump situation, it'll tell me if I am available in the cooling mode or the heating mode uh, at this moment in time. Um, if I don't have a heat pump, it doesn't really matter. I won't even see the screen. Cool Y1 in, so I have cool Y1 in, cool Y1 out, cool Y2 in, cool Y2 out. Those all work together. The ins are my thermostat signals coming into my economizer controller on here, and my outs are my economizer controller going to my compressor. You normally will not have the Y1s in and out matching and the Y2 in and out matching. Y1 comes in and that either becomes my economizer output or it could be my Y1 output if I am not in an economizer day. When Y2 comes in from the thermostat, that'll either be my Y1 output calling for a compressor if I happen to be an economizer day or Y2 output if I'm not an economizer day. So it doesn't always kind of match up there. Below that group of the, of the Y1 ins and outs, I have my mixed air temperature. I can see what that's actually reading right now. Ours is reading 53 degrees at the moment. My discharge air temperature sensor, if I have that optional sensor, outdoor air temperature sensor, outdoor air humidity percentage, return air temperature, if I have that optional sensor, return air humidity percentage, if I have that sensor. If I have a CO2 sensor, I'll have my input CO2. Right now we're reading 900 parts per million. And then the next one after that will be my DCV status. So this displays on uh, or off, obviously, displays on if I'm above my DCV set point, which was usually 1,000 or 1,100 parts per million, um, and off if I'm below my set point. My damper out. If I have a traditional 2 to 10 volt damper, then I'll have this screen on here. If I have a communicating damper actuator, then I won't see this screen, and instead I'll see my actuator position screens for my silk buses. So right now I have my damper out on here. This is a traditional actuator. How many volts am I sending out? In this case, I'm sending four volts out on a two to 10 volt option. Two meaning 0% open, 10 meaning 100% open. So what's my damper actually send, get, receiving right now? So this tells me what the controller is sending out. I could take my meter over by the damper actuator and see if I'm actually getting what I'm supposed to be getting here. If I have a communicating actuator, then instead of seeing damper out, I will see actuator position in terms of percentage. In our case, it's showing us 40% right now. So if I have a silk bus communicating actuator hooked up on here, that's the way this would display. If I have a silk bus communicating actuator, I also have an actuator count. So this is basically how many times um, my actuator has cycled. So one cycle is 180 degrees of movement. It could be 
10 degrees this way, 10 back, 10 back, 10 back, 10 back, you know, 18 times, or it could be a full, you know, 90 and then a full 90 back. But how many times have I gone 180 degrees uh, in summation? So in this case, 23,000 times. That's a pretty good amount. Uh, I think the maximum is 65,000 and then you're at the end of life of this particular actuator and you'd be looking at replacing the actuator at that point. So it's kind of a nice little thing to have on there with the communicating actuators so you know how, how much wear and tear has been put on that motor. Uh, my actuator, uh, am I an alarm or am I an okay? So if I have a voltage problem on the actuator or a torque problem, then that actuator would go into alarm and I would be able to see that here on this particular screen. It will either say okay or it'll say alarm on it. Uh, exhaust fan one out. So if my controller is telling the exhaust fan to turn on, then this will change from off to on. Exhaust fan two out. If I have a two stage exhaust fan, this would be that output for the second stage. If I have an optional ERV wired to here, which is rare, it would tell me if it's being commanded off or on. Mechanical cooling, my choices there, or my options to see on the screen there are zero, that's not zero, zero, <laughs> one or two. Zero would be that I don't have any mechanical cooling. One is first stage, two is second stage. And then the, the, uh, the last couple here, fan speed low or high. If I have a two speed fan, uh, then I have a two position damper, uh, minimum damper position on here. I will see either low or high associated with that on here. And then the last one, uh, W heat in. If I am getting a call for heat on a two speed fan system that would display on this particular screen here. So that's all the status screens that we have on there. If we back out of there, there's a couple more screens of interest to us. We've previously covered set points, setup, and advanced. But there's two other ones over here, checkout and alarms. So let's look at the checkout one first. So the checkout is I've set this whole thing up, everything's operational, and now I wanna run some, some tests on it to see if it's doing what it's supposed to do. I can either do this after I've just set this thing up, or I can do it when it's out in the field and I'm doing my PM. I can go out there and do a couple checkout things. So there's a few different, different things on here. Um, I have my damper positioning on here. Min and max because I have a CO2. If I don't have a CO2 sensor, then it would say damper minimum position. I would be able to test that uh, and command it to go to its minimum position. But here I can have it go to its, my ventilation minimum or my maximum. If I say yes to that and I hit enter, it'll actually run that test for me. And then I can physically go see it move to the position it's supposed to move to. And when it's all done, it'll say done on there and I can back out. So I can have it go to its minimum position or if I have a CO2, I can have it go to its minimum and its maximum CO2 position. I can also tell the damper to stroke fully open. So if I hit enter and say, yes, I wanna do that, it'll ro rotate the damper all the way open. And then the next option after that is to rotate the damper all the way closed. So when I'm doing my checkout, I wanna make sure the damper's not binding and the gears aren't having a problem and there's no, uh, there's no uh, shafts that are busted. There's no uh, um, crank arms attached to the second blade that have a problem. I can test this and make sure all the damper blades open and all the damper blades shut. As opposed to trying to trick it and give it fake temperatures and fake heating and cooling calls. I can just tell it to go wide open and then shut again. So that's open, that would be closed. Um, why one out and why one in? So as you know, the economizer controller is intercepting the thermostat signals. I could come here and tell it why one out and if I say yes to that, irregardless of anything else, temperature, humidity, whatever, call for cooling, none of that matters, I should see compressor one turn on no matter what. And then I can do the same thing for Y2 up, out, and have the second compressor turn on for me. Uh, auxiliary one out, I know it looks like 10, but it's actually auxiliary one O, oh, not zero. Auxiliary one out, so whatever I have wired to that output will energize. So if I have it set up to do alarming to my thermostat for, um, for code compliance, I can have this trigger here and then see if the alarm shows up on my thermostat like it's supposed to. If I back out one more screen and then scroll down to alarms, that's my very last screen that I have. So if I had any alarm codes, so I have this all set up correctly, my J controller pushes the alarm down to the thermostat, there's a problem with the system, so the customer sees the alarm on the thermostat from the economizer, the service tech goes out there, he sees the thermostat has an alarm. He says, well, what the heck's going on? You go up to the roof, you pull up this alarm screen, and it'll tell you exactly what the particular alarm problem is. So there's some sample ones that are on here for us. 
This particular one is mixed air temperature sensor has an error. CO2 sensor has an error. There's different ones I can scroll through here and look at. And I'm gonna pull up the whole list for you right now, just so you can kind of see them. So here's the different alarms that I might have. There's, I think, 14 or 15 of them on here. Uh, if I have a communicating actuator, a silk actuator, then I'll get more detailed alarming than if I didn't have that on there. If any of my sensors are out of range, I'll get alarms for that. If I have my freeze limit, if I had a fire shutdown event from the smoke detector system, I'll see that. If I have a calibration issue, um, if I have on the bottom of the screen here, uh, voltage problems with my actuator, any one of those can trigger an alarm and I'll get my miscellaneous alarm and this screen is where I can see what that detailed alarm point actually is. So that will be all of the settings that we've covered between these two videos on the Jade controller settings um, and well, I'll see you guys next time. Well, as you can see, there's quite a bit going on in that Jade Economizer controller. It's dang near a DDC controller at this point. Hopefully that helps you guys out in the field and understanding what settings to set up and what things you'll see on the status and alarm codes. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.